Okay, may we start the session? Uh, there is only 34 of uh, 30 of the participants, and maybe we will uh, let them get in, uh, and we won't wait for them, and we can just start the session. Uh, good day, Miss Jesslyn, you are here, and also Mr. Afdi. Thank you for joining us. Okay, uh, do you want to test your microphone maybe? Oh uh, yeah, hello everyone. I'm oh yeah, we can hear you clearly. Thank oh. you. Okay, uh, now we will start. Good afternoon everyone and good day to you. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, dear lecturer, and committee of the third SPIPB summer course program 2020. Also students and guests and also speakers, Ms. Jesslyn Darmade, co-founder at Panen Abnormal, and also Mr. Abdi Pratama uh, from Agriculture Technology Park, Cigombong. Uh, thank you very much for attending this general lecture. Good morning, uh, good afternoon for all participants. Um, my name is Antonia Rumondang Sinaga as the Master of Ceremony today. Welcome to our industry speaker session. Dear students, uh, colleagues and speakers, before we start the general lecture, I would like to inform you the sequence of the today program. The first one is opening from Master of Ceremony and then introduction of the speakers, Ms. Jaslyn and Mr. Abdi. After that, we have presentation for 20 minutes, 20 minutes, and after that discussion for speaker one, and then we will continue for speaker two, the second speaker. And then after that, we ha will have a closing and uh, maybe a bit of announcement. Uh, before we start, I would like to introduce our first speaker. Let me share my screen first. Okay. Okay. Um, Miss Jesslyn. I'm sorry, Ms. Jesslyn Darmadi. Uh, she is a co-founder at Panen Abnormal. Uh, she graduated from Las Roche International School of Hotel Management from Switzerland and very keen to work in an innovative and environmental sustainable hospitality sectors. Uh, she has a large amount of organizational experience such as in future of hospital hospitality summit and other organization. Uh, studying abroad and working in hotels exposed her to various challenges resulting in valuable experiences. She has passion in communication and environmental sustainable property management. By the end of the day, she strives for both business and environmental sustainability strategical planning. As you can see, uh, she, she also the co-founder of Panen, Panen Abnormal, and she have experiences uh, from EV Hive as facility manager and digital marketing intern uh, at Bulgari Resort Bali as sales assistant intern and also front office intern. Okay, um, and then we will continue with our second speaker, uh, Mr. Afdi Pratama. Uh, he, he was born at Jakarta on 1991. Um, he is a government, uh, government, government public officer. A government officer. Thank yes. you for helping me. <laughs> government officer. And he graduated uh, from IPB University as a veterinarian. Uh, doctor uh, and also his magister uh, program is from IPB University also um, it's from technology of veterinary and 
you are still on your uh, study and good luck for that. I hope that uh, there will be a success for you. Uh, without further ado, without further ado, um, I, I welcome our speaker, our first speaker, Ms. Jessalyn. Uh, Ms. Jessalyn, the floor is yours. And I will help you with the share screen. All right, thank you. First of all, thank you for the opportunity today. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, so let's wait for the slides first to be shared. Okay, so thank you for sharing the slides. So I'm Jesslyn. Um, I'm the co-founder of Pandan Abnormal. And today I would like to invite all of you to understand the current situation that we're facing in Indonesia. And hopefully we could collaborate in the near future to combat food waste. So if we look at the fruits and vegetables, how green and nourishing they are. But how green are they for the environment? So little story, uh, back in 2019, our late partner Malvin uh, randomly went to a local market and had this terrible <coughs> findings where piles of fruits, vegetables were left on the side of the road. So basically it's just a local market and we just enter it and everything's just piling up on the side of the road, like carrots, uh, vegetables and everything there. And we were wondering like, why, why are they there? because it has decent looking, unsorted, but left as trash. And um, so we ask around. Uh, we ask like to the sellers and everyone uh, in the local markets. And basically they, they were giving us the same answers. They said, uh, well, those are the bad ones. No one would buy it. Here's the key. Um, the sellers were saying that there, there will be no one who would buy those fruits and vegetables. So it is uh, more efficient for them to throw it away rather than to keeping it stored. So we see it as a big problem and we just wanna do something about it. So here we are, Pan and Abnormal, an ugly movement with a social agenda to reduce food waste. So we aim to rescue fruits, vegetables, basically uh, any food away from the bin. So let's take a look on this image. Maybe we can go to the next slide. Here is a pile of organic waste. This can be easily found in a typical, any typical traditional market in Indonesia. So, well, let's spot the edibles. As we can see, like I, I can see those bananas are super fine. I would totally eat that, the apples too. And can you see like what are the things that you can still eat from that picture basically? Because like, you see there are like apples, greens, like most of the vegetables and fruits there are actually still edibles. But can you imagine how much of those in a larger scale? Well, you know, in a bigger scale, when they reach the landfill, it becomes nothing but methane gases, which worsen the world's planet, uh, the world's condition. Okay, so first, let's go to the next slide. First, let's get to know what causes the products to be considered as waste. So from the consumer end, the aesthetics factors uh, play a major role in creating waste. As you can see here, like the shape, the size, it could be too small, too big, it just didn't pass the criteria for the market, or it has some black spots, or it's overripe. And in some cases, like for example, mangoes back in 2018, we have um, oversupplies of mangoes and the price was so low and we just have too much mangoes. We can't really utilize it. Or there's also poor storage handling, which causes the fruits to become ugly, infected plants, processing during the kitchen, leftovers or maybe forgotten in our fridges. How many of you have left like your bananas inside the fridge until it gets rotten? 
I think it's a very common mistake for all of us here, right? And you know, like us human, we uh, we have trained to see things based on ads, like beauty, like it's uh, aesthetics, and we we are trained to pick beauty over the ugly. So the same perspectives uh, is also being applied towards fruits and vegetables, which causes a really fatal uh, result. Let's get to the next slide. So here's the numbers in Indonesia. In Indonesia, Jakarta is obviously the leading organic waste producer. We're making around 3,600 tons of organic waste per day. And if we look at the chart, um, the classifications of the waste being made, uh, vegetables and fruits are the highest contributors. And, uh, okay, we can go to the next slide. Yeah, and in fact, like one third, one third of the world produce never gets consumed. Isn't it sad? Can you imagine like out of all the fruits and vegetables, they're just being thrown away. And Indonesia itself has produced nearly uh, 20 million tons fruits back in 2018. And if we count on the math, like one third of it, still a huge number is that it to be left as waste. So the waste stage happened during these different stages, as you can see here. Pan and abnormal is standing on the consumption end on the right side. And we are still waiting for you all as the agricultural experts to start something from the earlier stage, like from the agriculture, where of course we know like the plants are prone to various threats such fungi, pests, plant infections, floods, or any other natural causes. And post-harvest, um, for example, when you're not properly pick a mango from the tree and the sap burns the skin, causing all the black spots, which is not desired by most supermarkets, uh, followed by the processing method. Uh, this is when the producers basically started to sort and grade the fruits. And distribution, here's the tricky part in Indonesia. So this is basically the stage where the farmers started to transport the fruits and the vegetables. And you know, like they, they pile everything up in the truck basically. And we're not really utilizing the cardboards, boxes, or everything. It's just a huge pile on the backside of the truck. And obviously, when it reaches the market, the bottom part of the vegetables and fruits wouldn't be in a perfect shape. And hence, it will go again to waste. And the last of all, where we're standing, is the consumption. So it's where basically the product on the hand of the consumers and at times it becomes waste because it's discarded for some reasons, like for example, oversupply during parties or just left in our fridges and so on. So in the next slide, I would like to show you the chart comparing the data of Southeast Asia versus the North America. So, well, it's a little bit confusing to make it easier. The light purple side is the earlier agriculture stages. And as it gets darker, uh, it reaches the consumption where it meets the consumer. So let's focus on the fruits and vegetables. So I, I just would like to compare the trend between those two, uh, between the developed countries and the less developed countries. So on the left side, it's the Southeast Asia. As you can see here, we're losing more on the earlier stages, like on the, let's say for the fruits and vegetables, we have been losing like uh, the 15% of the waste happens during the agriculture stage and more on the processing stage. Comparing to the United States data, uh, they're losing more on the consumption end, meaning they're losing more where people just waste their processed food or just like basically wasting something on their fridge. Um, it is usually happened due to uh, over portioning meals and also self compulsive purchases in the supermarket. Okay, so in the next slide, I would like to uh, let you know, like, why should we reduce fruit waste? 
well, I hope this came to your concern. Like the, we have nearly 800 million people on this planet with us suffering hunger. And yet the increasing number of population is expected to reach 9 billion people by 2050. What does it mean? If the population number is getting higher, um, meaning we need to produce more food to cater uh, everybody's needs by then. But we got to realize that uh, agriculture is actually uh, is actually has become a major threat for this earth. How so? Because basically agriculture has consumed 70% uh, our fresh water and then it is also responsible for 80% of the world's uh, deforestations as well as contributing 30% of the greenhouse gas emissions. That is for the agriculture itself. We haven't discussed about the waste of the agriculture, which also creating methane gases, uh, which also uh, considered as the greenhouse gas emissions. So keep, keep this in mind, like no matter how the fruit looks, it consumes basically the same amount of water, fertilizers, land, and human labor to grow. And it still, uh, it still contains the same amount of nutrition. So we should not waste it. So enough with my stories. Uh, I would love actually to hear some ideas from the agriculture experts. Like I've, I've tell you all the problems that we're facing now. And I would like to hear if any one of you has any idea like how to tackle this problem. Like, cause like this is our planet, right? It's a, uh, I think it's just right and just for us to collaborate and start to do something. You know? So can anyone share some ideas with me right now? Like what do you have in mind to tackle this uh, issue? Um, hello, Mom Jesseline. Jesseline. Yeah, hello. Um, hi, I'm Joshua Rapatola from Mariano Marcos State University. Yeah. So um, I see that um, in Southeast Asia, um, in the processing in agriculture, there is already a lot of um, wasted uh, fruits and vegetables like that. So um, the idea that I want to still instill is that um, maybe um, we can integrate the processing, like the machines and equipments, in the processing unit in agriculture so that um, it will be less, uh, the waste will be less and compared to the, um, the um, that is the idea that I want to share. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Joshua. So it is correct, like uh, we need to improve the equipments, the infrastructure during the processing. It is very important, obviously, to reduce the food waste. Is there any other idea from anyone? Maybe from the earlier stages. Um, hello, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I share about the um, about the to reduce the waste. Uh, in my place, we practice the zero zero waste management. What I did to lift over vegetable is uh, we recycle it, we decompose, or either be feed to the animals. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, thank you. That's also a great idea to feed it to the animals, yes. So, all right, so there is a question from Ridwan. Uh, okay, so maybe we can discuss this later during the question and answers. Uh, so thank you for the feedbacks. Well, there are basically a lot of ways for us to reduce the food waste. What is important? done for now is that we got to do it right now because uh, we need to make a change now we don't we don't wait anymore so basically any ideas you have we just got to do it right now and um, let's go to the next slide I would like to uh, share what uh, what we're learning from Panet Abnormal from the current market uh, the next one please Yeah, so the fruit business. So as a pan and abnormal, we're basically uh, trying to find markets for the ugly fruits. And this is what we face. Uh, people are not, uh, in Indonesia, they're not really buying the fruits and vegetables, the fruits majority. 
it's because of due to the high price and due to the high price it caused the low demand uh, low market demand and it caused again the high waste so this cycle is just a terrible one and fun and abnormal is trying to change the low market demand into like higher market demand so hence uh, we could make a lower waste and lower price and in fact indonesians are only 843 percent of the recommendation uh, recommended intake for fruits and vegetables so we need to educate the market as well to uh, to make people realize that yes you need to eat fruits and vegetables so it it won't be wasted mm -hmm. And uh, okay, let's go to the next slide. All right, so from the low consumption, Pan and Abnormal was also thinking like, why Indonesia are not trying to export fruits or let's get to know more about Indonesia's exports. And eventually the number is quite surprising and it's very low. Like um, the total production in 2018 was 20 million and the amount of exported uh, goods are only 87,000 tons, which is like very little in comparison. And uh, well, don't ask me why Thailand and uh, other smaller countries with smaller land could export more fruits. Cause like, here's what Indonesia is currently facing. The most people would say that we are having uh, inadequate quality and quantity of infrastructure, extremely high logistic costs, lacking of professionals, corporate farmers, and also there are some government issues until it causes some not so fun fact where at times imported oranges and apples from China can be cheaper than the local ones in Indonesia. So how do Pan and Abnormal contribute? Let's go to the next slide. Yes, so Pan and Abnormal, first of all, we just want to prove the demand is there. So we raised the awareness for the ugly fruits via online. So we're expecting a higher demand, which costs less waste and lower price. And also we are currently utilizing the sales data that we collected from our online marketplace to determine the fruit stocks, consumer behaviors, and to source supplies in a timely manner. Um, we also provide a better storage system than most uh, local markets do, where we aim to prolong the fruit shelf life basically by, you know, like controlling the humidity and the temperature of the, our storage room. Um, and, and there's this frequently asked questions would be like, where did you get the, the fruits from? So right now we are having various partners ranging from farmers, fruit distributors, or even traditional markets. So our goal is to rescue fruits away from the landfill. Like um, no matter where it came from, we just rescue it as far as we could. So our message here is that people need to appreciate fruits for the nutrition sought, despite of their uh, appearances. We should not um, have the mindset of ugly fruits for a cheaper price. Cheaper price for all the fruits will be achieved once the amount of waste is reduced. So currently we actively promote, oh, we can go to the next slide. So we currently promoting our ideas and products in throughout online platforms such as Tokopedia for selling the fruits and Shopee. While uh, for the ideas itself, we are actively using Instagram and we're about to start TikTok. Um, so currently we also have been partnering up with various juice stalls, ice cream producers, restaurants, some hotels, caterings, basically, basically to maximize the consumptions of the ugly fruits. And some of the brands are actually proudly uh, tell the market that they are currently using ugly fruits to combat the food waste issues, which currently becoming some kind of a trend in Jakarta. Um, so we've been receiving uh, positive feedbacks and supports from the market so far. And lastly, 
Here is some advice how you can contribute now. It starts from you. This is what you can do from home. Like you gotta shop smart, you gotta buy ugly produce, and then you know your expiring dates, uh, save your leftovers, uh, cut down your portions, donate, uh, organize the fridge, and also as it mentioned before, to compose your scra uh, the scrapes. And for me personally, you know, like in a, in a group of friends, when we hang out, like obviously there's always been someone who can finish the food on the whole table. So say, keep, keep that someone to finish all the food so we won't waste any food. Basically sharing the food is great. So uh, thank you for your kind attention. Uh, I hope this uh, information would inspire you to start something to reduce food waste. And feel free to contact me if you have any ideas for collaborations in mind. We are, Fun and Abnormal is always open for collaborations. And um, well, agriculture isn't as green as it looks basically. So I hope that you can figure things out in the near future, like how to make it greener, more environmentally sustainable for the future to cater the world's need without actually damaging the world too much. So thank you very much. So if you have any questions, uh, we are now opening the Q&A sessions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Jocelyn. Uh, you're, you are very informative. Uh, and also maybe you can inform us uh, what is the Tokopedia and Shopee account where they can buy the products yeah. and maybe they can also uh, inform that uh, to their friends or family. Yeah, sure. So it's Pan and Abnormal as written in our uh, logo. Basically, you can just search Pan and Abnormal in Shopee, Tokopedia, okay. and then it will be there immediately. Okay. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, students, friends, uh, you can start. I will stop sharing so I can look into the chat room. Okay. Okay. The first question, uh, it comes from Ridwan. Uh, Ridwan, I want to ask, what is the boundary for a bad looking food that's safe to consume? Uh, and if we move in a small scale, for example, in my family, is it enough to reduce waste by, by making them an organic compost? Okay, yes, so in my opinion for that, basically we, we still can consume all the fruits and vegetables as long as it, it is not rotten. So. There, there are like two kind of prevention, like before it is rotten and after it is rotten. If it is rotten, then you can just turn it into compost. But if it's not rotten, you need to maximize it by knowing like, oh, for example, I'm having a banana and it's getting like, uh, it's having its black spots already. It's nearly ripe, it's ripe. You need to know like where the fruit is ready to eat and you don't forget to eat it. And then you need to put the vegetables, let's say at home, you need to put the vegetables uh, and fruits in a visible place, like on your dining table, for example. And then also, you need to know how to store the fruits correctly. Like, for example, banana is best to keep like in the room temperature. Don't put it inside the fridge yet. Something like that. It's a, there are like lots of ways, like lots of uh, things to know how to handle your fruits correctly. And how about the compost, uh, organic compost? Is it enough for the family? Uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a great move for families to start actually, uh, even to start uh, uh, what is separating their trashes at home, like the organic and the non-organic. That's a great start already. And then like when you created the compost, well, of course, it's a great thing. It's, it's enough basically for you not to add more to the landfills, you know, like basically keep it yourself and then you utilize the compost for your plants later on. Yeah. Yes, I also agree with you because uh, I also started with my family here. We we separate the, the garbage into organic and non-organic. So if we start from now and start from ourselves, so our maybe our next generation can also uh, think that that is the common thing yes. that we doesn't have to it 
we can we don't see it as a as a very heavy thing to do because we already see it as a common thing. Yes. So we can pass okay. it into generations. Yeah, it's very Thank important you. to teach our children as well for that. So it's their new normal. Maybe it's weird for us, but it's their new normal. Yeah, the new normal. I yeah. agree. Uh, is there any other questions? Um, or maybe, uh, Miss Jessalyn, maybe you can also uh, give some some feedback to us because uh, this summer course also require them to, we also give them a competition. Uh, they need to make a poster that have a social issue related with this uh, summer course team. Uh, maybe, be, maybe they can take this issue about food waste and also ugly fruits to them to, uh, to campaign uh, to the to their family, to their friends, and also uh, their network. So uh, through that campaign, that they can uh, they can make a positive uh, positive uh, feedback from all of the society and uh, and all the friends they have. Yes, certainly. Like if you're making like a campaign about these ugly fruits. Obviously, you know, if we tell our family, it's not easy to convince our parents, obviously, to eat like uh, ugly fruits because they're usually the ones who are uh, um, picking like all the nice fruits from the local market, you know, like picking it like one by one, choosing it. It's very uncommon for them to just like online shop the fruits and just like basically take whatever they could, you know. Mm -hmm. And for us, uh, you know, like every fruits, like the ugly fruits, they have their own purposes. Let's say uh, we have pets, you know, we can always give them like the fruits that are kind of bad, you know, like uh, if it's not uh, well ripen, and then we can just share it to our pets. Or if it's really tastes really bad, then we can turn it into a compost. But people are not thinking that way. They only want to take the best mm. for them, you know, because of the price probably. They did not realize like how much waste they are making. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have another question here. Yeah, we also have other question from Ridoni. Mm. Uh, how about the law in production sector? Do you think it is good enough to control the line of productions, especially in Indonesia? Because I think the law is effect, have, has an effect on product waste. Uh, maybe Ridoni can explain more. Uh, which law is it? Yeah, you which can law unmute is it yourself. Huh? Yeah, uh, I actually don't know uh, exactly about the law, but I think there is uh, a law that control about the production in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you can uh, give an example what it affected, what the effect is. Uh, um, what I'm trying to ask is, uh, do the government has limitation uh, to some a company to pro uh, to produce a product about food? Maybe. Mm. I mean, uh, is there any limitation from the government to the company to product? Oh, uh, to maybe. yes. Maybe Ms. Jesslyn uh, know about the government uh, law that reinforce uh, producers to maybe limit their work, maybe. Okay. So uh, what I see from the government is actually it's not that they're limiting us. It's more like they're lacking of support to the agriculture. Because like, um, for example, if the, gov the government is uh, telling the farmers, okay, let's say, we need to hit uh, this certain amount of production of fruits to exports or to sell in the larger markets, you know. Of course, the farmers will eventually study well, educate themselves well to produce more in a very efficient way. Like for now, I think it's quite laid back instead of uh, for the production itself, uh, where it's like the farmers itself is not uh, optimizing their capabilities in growing the plants 
and it's not the government that is limiting but it's just like the limitation that are made by ourselves because the government is basically not putting so much attention in my opinion to this case yet okay okay uh, thank you for the explanation thank you thank you uh, we have also another question here from satria Uh, thank you for sharing, Mrs. Jaslyn. Uh, yes, the, the question is, how about the waste from supermarket? Is there any solution for that you can recommend? Yes. So for now, for the fruits itself, we are absorbing the uh, waste from the supermarkets as well. So from the basically, uh, the fruits coming to the supermarkets through the fruit distributors. And... For the first distributors, the number that we get, for example, they're sending like one tons of mangoes to the supermarket. The supermarket will choose on and will take approximately only like around 200 kgs of all the mangoes. So what we do is that we are trying to help them to absorb the remaining at 800 kilos. So it won't go to waste or it won't go back to the village, you know, to the farmers. Because it's like uh, the, the gas emission is just not make sense in number and the cost to transport it back is also too, uh, too expensive. There is no choice other than the landfill for those excess amount of fruits. So here we are, but not normal. We are absorbing those kind of fruits. Excuse me, Miss Jocelyn. Yeah. When I saw the from YouTube, I see there is a lot of waste because The product isn't sell well, like the fruit. I, when it's become a little ugly, mm. they just like throw it to trash. How about that? Yeah. So the that issue, like the supermarket immediately uh, get rid of the ugly produce because because of why. Because they think the market demand, uh, like the people wouldn't buy and touch the ugly fruits anymore. So the supermarket, of course, they just want to get rid of the waste because no one would buy it. Exactly. Like that's just like how the supermarket is thinking. No one would buy the ugly produce. So they just get rid of it. How if we change the mindset of the consumers? If we... If we tell the supermarket, hey, don't throw away the ugly produce. The, so, uh, there are some people who will actually take and buy it for you. So don't waste it yet until it is rotten. So this is what we're trying to do here to change the consumer behavior, to educate the market, to understand that ugly fruits are okay to be purchased. Yeah. Hope that helps. Yeah, it is also our uh jobs also as agent of change everyone here is it and also uh there is uh i think maybe this is the last question because of the time restraint from joshua repotola um do you have feeding program in panen abnormal where you can utilize the ugly fruits and vegetables into a food like fruit salads fruit juice or salad and feed to the malnourished children, poor, poor people, and homeless. Wow, that's a good idea. Yeah, so for now, for an abnormal, we're handling just the raw fruits while we're having partners that are actually doing that for us. So uh, there are like some organizations, like charity organizations that are sourcing the fruits from us and they're donating the fruits for the people who needs it more. So Panen Abnormal currently is not hand, uh, processing the fruits, but we are having partners to do that. Okay, yeah, it's a good idea. Uh, maybe we can have one last one, one <laughs> from Leonardo Alemeo, Ale, Ale sorry. Uh, from Isat Yulion Campus, Philippines. The question is, uh, in food waste management, what is your best idea to tell us to reduce the fruit and vegetables become waste? Mm, so basically in campus, meaning it's in the canteen or what is it? 
So it's a campus canteen, I assume. Is it? Uh, Leonardo, you can unmute yourself and ask the question directly. Yes, ma'am. That's what I mean. Okay. So in a campus, probably. Um, so the fruits and vegetables uh, that are usually thrown away in a canteen is the fruit cuts that are very prone to uh, becoming ugly really fast, you know, because like fruit cuts, I think um, canteen should stop giving fruit cuts. Instead, they should give like uh, bananas, the whole bananas, whole apples, you know, because of why? Because like whole fruits have like longer shelf life comparing to the fruit cuts. So I think that's one way to cut the food waste. And if it didn't work out, where you need to look at the number, like how much the students are actually consuming. So you don't uh, stock too much of it. So you just store like the exact amount or less or even less amount of fruits that actually consumed by the students. So you need to play with numbers. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, I agree with you because uh, we start from the moment we buy. Yeah. Uh -uh. Don't buy too much. And maybe also uh, we can also campaign about uh, in several society, it is maybe uh, they have a, a bit of a shame maybe if, we, if they finish all of the plates oh, yeah. the, uh -uh. so they have to uh they have to uh left the something on their plate to just uh well it's just uh it's just uh the culture on in the society that we have to change yeah correct but again like we need to uh we need to remember but in indonesia in southeast asia the problem does not rely so much on the consumer side, actually. Like, so we basically finish our food a lot compared to the Western countries. Mm. But the, the, the wastage happens during like the agriculture processing, transporting, where, because like we have like lack of infrastructure. Okay. Um, uh, thank you, Miss Jaslyn for your very insightful uh, session. Uh, we hope that you are still here yes. <laughs> and maybe also give us uh, any comments after this. And uh, for the participant uh, and also speakers and also colleagues, uh, we will welcome our second speaker, Mr. Afdi. Um, Mr. Afdi, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me first share my screen. Do you screen. need me to share the screen or you No, I will do this uh, okay. screen. Okay. Okay. Have you seen the presentation? Yes, I see it. Oh, yeah. And um, may I uh, speak a little bit? Because uh, from Ms. Kania, I received uh, information that you want to make this presentation uh such as a discussion session. So you wanted the students to ask directly? Uh, maybe uh, the students can ask me uh, through the chat box. Okay. So if there are, there are still any question regarding our material, uh, you can write it down to with in the chat box. Okay. Okay, okay, students. Uh, every time you want, you have an answer, you have an, a question. You can write it down on the chat box. Thank you. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, firstly, I would like to say thank you to uh, Sekolah Vokasi IPB Summer Course Committee for a change to me. Uh, Today, I would like to give a presentation about Agricultural Technology Park, uh, Cigombong, Bogor. So, sorry. Okay. So, basically, Agricultural Technology Park, there are 36 scattered throughout 
Indonesia, and it serves as multiple function unit as for education, for production, and training center. Agricultural Technology Park was established as an, an agricultural tourist destination with tagline Agricultural Education Village. And the aim of this technology park is to inspire people as many as possible, especially visitor to become entrepreneur in agriculture and livestock. So uh, our Agricultural Technology Park, which is located in Chigombong, is one of the first built. We have a vision to be an uh, agricultural education village. With this vision, we have three missions. The first one is to help the com community to do professional agribusiness. The second one is to become agribusiness training center. And the third one, is to become agricultural tourism destination. We have many facilities that supports our, uh, our activities. There are a meeting room, there are camping ground, barn, greenhouse, hydroponic facilities, Yumina Bumina Spawn, uh, composting house, tabulam pot, and local chicken battery cages. And what we do in uh, Agricultural Technology Park, actually, we have a local chicken as our main com commodity. <clears throat> our chicken is very special. Why so special? Let's see. Here's why our chicken is very special. The egg production is higher than average local chicken and the chicken has lost its broad. So maybe you can say the chicken is not incubate their eggs um, automatically. And uh, it has a good feed conversion. To support the growth uh, of the chicken, we made sort kind of products such as herbal potions and probiotics to support the gut's health. Besides, uh, as an egg producer, our local chicken produce chicken meat as well. For your information, lo our local chicken has distinctive taste, which is very tasty. So many people are uh, love to eat our local chicken. And of course, it has to be cooked first. So this is the DOC, the, the day old chicken. Uh, and the chicken indus industry, which is running in agricultural technology park, we can say it like a cell system. The company is like, is act like a nucleus or the core of the cell, which is regulating and supplying the DOC, vaccine, medicine, and feed to the farmer who are acting as the plasma. The plasma's function is to raise the chicken at, and at the end, the chicken will be sold to the company again. We also provide business training for people who, are, who have interest in, agriculture, uh, in raising chicken because many people now uh, in this pandemic uh, time they lost their job, so they look for uh, business. And one of them is raising chicken. We, uh, beside of chicken, we have a small ruminants too. We have dairy goat here. Uh, we, name, we call it sapera goat, which is uh, a crossbreed of PE 50% and sanen 50%. From this, uh, from the milk, we milk from the dairy goat. <clears throat> we can produce many, many kind of product like whey, uh, kef kefir, uh, and soap.
We also have Garut composite sheep, which is a uh, beef. Uh, it's not uh, for the meat. I uh, sorry, it's for the meat. And Garut sheep is crossbreed of Garut sheep and <clears throat> Molton Carolay sheep from France and Saint Croix from the USA. The sheep has a superior growth rate and is very fertile. As you can see, our sheep is kept in a barn and we feed them with the forage and concentrate. So uh, as well as in chicken, we also provide uh, a business training uh, for people who interest in developing dairy goat as a business. We move to our next, uh, our next uh, maybe part is about the agriculture. Uh, our agriculture uh, is operated by Mutiara Tani uh, Tugujaya, which all the member are women. And our aim is to empowering women to help the household economy. There are three kinds of crop that uh, we develop, they are core crop, intercrop, and food crop. The core crop are durian, nutmeg, robusta coffee, guava. And the intercrop, they are horticulture like chili, cucumber, green bean, long bean, and eggplant. And food crop, there are two, brown rice in pari and taro. To support the agriculture, the crop, we also made the fertilizer from the urine of the <coughs> dairy goat and sheep, of course. And we also make uh, organic fertilizer, which uh, is from composting organic waste. So maybe we can have a collaboration with and abnormal maybe someday. So uh, as well as like in livestock, we also have a training center for agriculture. And this is the pre-urban farming training. So for anyone who have, who doesn't have any knowledge about agriculture or uh, never touched by the agriculture, don't worry, we, we have the pre-urban farming training so you can learn it from zero. So after the agriculture, livestock, we have fisheries too, and we develop decorative fish. They are goldfish, koi, discus, black goose, cardinal tetra tetra, and manfish. Besides the decorative fish, we have uh, catfish as uh, fish for consumption and we develop uh, pearl catfish. And this is the catfish, it's uh, rather big. So we have a unique uh, kind of system to, uh, to the, for the fisheries. We combine it with the plants here, so we can use the fish uh, excrement to the as the fertilizer for this uh, plants. We call it bumina yumina. We also develop tourism in agricultural technology park. And to support that, we have uh, facilities. There are meeting facilities, practice facilities, and lodging facilities. This is our camping ground and outbound. So uh, we can also accommodate if there are any uh, activities to outdoor activities. So uh, we can. <coughs> uh, Hold it as well. This is our last. So we can accommodate internship and education as well. 
So this is the high school students internship. So uh, many students from all around Indonesia uh, come to our agriculture technology park to learn uh, to learn more about agriculture, livestock, and fisheries. So we have a lecture and practice and maybe some um, like a discussion. Not also for the high school student, we also can accommodate college students. So if anyone here uh, have interest to go to Indonesia, maybe you should put Agricultural Technology Park Chigombong uh, to be in your list. This is the Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries Exhibition for Children. So we, in, we can uh, introduce uh, children to agriculture more and more so they can uh, learn about agricultural livestock and fisheries. Thank you. And this is our contact. We have email, website, Instagram, uh, double Instagram. We have TTP Cigombong and Rumahnya Petani. And we have Facebook fan page. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Afdi. And uh, we will we will come into our discussion session. Uh, I heard that you have a, 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 a something to discuss that you want to uh, give to our students. Yes, actually, a challenge. Uh, maybe a, not a challenge. It's like uh, uh, like. Uh, opportunity, a change for any students here, which are, uh, which are in enrolling in this summer course. I would like to have uh, any uh, suggestion or any critics or uh, for the TTP because uh, for, for the agricultural technology park because. Uh, we have, we will face a millennial age. So the people are changing. So maybe we have to change as well. So maybe if you have any suggestion for us, uh, how to develop uh, more efficiently or effectively, you may share your ideas. Okay. Uh, before we are, uh very sorry because uh, the video of uh, Taman Teknologi Pertanian Cigombong isn't finished yet and maybe because of that uh, the students haven't seen the uh, Taman Teknologi Pertanian yet from the virtual reality video um, but and maybe if after they watch the video they can relate more with it but uh, based on uh, Mr. Afdi presentation um, is any of the students have uh, maybe experience before beforehand that you uh, maybe before you go to uh, agriculture park before in your area uh, on Philippines that is maybe different different from the ones in Indonesia. And maybe you can tell us uh, the differences. And also maybe you can tell us, uh, maybe you have some ideas that you can share and that you, maybe students from the informatics or computer technology can share the, their ideas to make, make it more um, technology-based uh, marketing, maybe, and how to how to reach out to the young people here. Uh, what is the idea that you can offer to 
Taman Teknologi Pertanian uh, Agriculture Park Technology Cigombong. Park. Uh, Agriculture Technology Park uh, Cigombong uh, that can uh, they can um, make the marketing more relatable with the uh, young people here. Is there anyone who have maybe questions or um, ideas. ideas? Or suggestion for us? Or suggestion? Because, yeah. <laughs> maybe ideas from young generation, such as the students here, can help us to be better mm -hmm. and know what we should do. Uh, Hello, this, sir. Yes. Yes. I'm just curious, sir, if you are also practicing. Hey, by the way, I am Julius Publicus, sir, from Mariano Marcos State University, a major in animal science. I'm just curious if uh, the park also employs organic practices and because it is timely in this era because we are facing from clim climatic changes and people are uh, uh, also want healthy foods to eat and to be trained in organic as a way of uh, combating the uh, effect of this um, climatic condition, sir. Okay. Thank you, Julius, for your question. And Genaya, do you have also a, have question? Oh, sorry. Uh, I have an idea, actually. Yes. Uh, so I heard about this farming system and I think it's in Netherlands if I'm not mistaken so when they're about to feed the animals they set the animals they set the animals free in like in the grassland so that they could find their own food so I heard that uh, this system could make uh, the better meat quality of the animals because if we just put them in the cage they could uh, feel stressful I, I heard about this so uh, when in just in case if the animals uh, would be missing if we set them free they plant some kind of chip in the animals so that they could track the location of the animals so it, uh, they could find it uh, anytime so what do you think about uh, this farming system? Uh, do you want to implement it or not? Because I could see that in Indonesia, if we set the cow free or the sheep or the goat, it could be missing any seconds, not like in Netherlands. So what do you think, Mr. Afti? Okay, I got it. Uh, for Julius Publico, Maybe you can uh, repeat your question because uh, I still don't get your question. Uh, I am just curious, sir, if the park or uh, the yes, the agricultural park is also practicing organic, sir, organic bio farming. Organic bio farming. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the question and the ideas. Uh, I will. Uh, I will answer uh, from Julius first. So your question is very great. Uh, you ask if our park is practicing organic bio, uh, I, organic bio. Uh, organic yeah. only, sir. Organic, organic. agriculture in terms organic of agriculture. Any commodities, sir. Uh, yes, because we use... Uh, like natural fertilizer from the urine in, uh, from the dairy goat and the sheep and also all the we we don't use the pesticide pesticide yes and uh, for the question genaya's question regarding the maybe you ask about the ranch system yeah Yes, I agree with you with the, if the animal is set free with in the, the grassland, we, they can search their food uh, instead we giving uh, to them. 
and could make the meat qualities better. Yes, definitely. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, in Indonesia, we can do that because we don't have such like a uh, very large areas for the uh, for the farm because everyone is building houses. So we are very uh, the the land is uh, decreasing. So for for that we 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 cannot. So the best way to raise uh, livestock is still in the cage or in the barn. Okay, Mister, I I get it. Yeah. Thank you. And maybe we can also uh, do the freestyle barn where the animals uh, won't be uh, attached to the rope twenty four seven. Yes. yes. Uh, um, and that maybe will be an idea because uh, Agriculture Technology Park have uh, hectares of land. So maybe in the yes. future. But we have a limitation for land and mm -hmm. uh, for the next upcoming years, we have many facilities to be built. Oh, okay. So maybe for the farm, is very limited. We have no uh, expand. We have no plans for expanding the areas, so maybe uh, it can't be applied. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have another comment here from uh, Eli Lim from College of Veterinary Medicine, uh, TAU. Tarlak University. Uh, maybe Eli, you can unmute yourself and ask the question directly. Eli? He wanted to command, comment uh, about the animal farming and sustainable integrated farm present empowering women and food security uh, maybe you can have more comment about this. Uh, Mr. Afdi, uh, do you maybe uh, do the training for women, empowering women, uh, to for them to make their own jobs? Yes. So uh, women in agricultural technology part are persuaded to be uh, resilience so they can make their own money by doing some like agriculture uh, things like hydroponics or uh, as like I said like a crop doing crop so the the plants are are uh, beside their houses so they can control it without forgetting their uh, job in the house. So their daily duties. Yeah, their duties. Uh, maybe you also train them uh, into producing something, not only uh, vegetables, raw vegetables, but maybe you uh, give them training about make a, a product, not raw materials, but also product that they can sell or maybe uh, you also give them training about how to plant their own, I mean, uh, their bumbu dapur, what is the like English her word? Like herbs. <laughs> yes, yeah. like that, that can like help them. seasoning, right? Okay, yeah. so yeah, there are, uh, a, there is a plan to, to, to there. So they, uh, for now, they still grow their uh, vegetables only because maybe they come back to the <laughs> uh, limitation of the um, uh, limitation of the areas for the uh, crop. So maybe in the next uh, year or time, 
we have the we have a plan to expanding uh, the products. Okay, thank you. Uh, it will be it because uh, if we empowering women, it will make a lot of changes in the world because they can uh, pass it on to generations. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Abdi. Uh, anyone from the ecotourism study program have question? Because maybe you can uh, go to this technology, agriculture technology park on your uh, field trip, the next field trip maybe. Yes. How about from Miss Kania? Mrs. Kania is one of the lecturers from ecotourism uh, study program from School of Vocacy here. Maybe you have any other comment or uh, ideas? Unmute yourself first. Yes, yeah, sorry, my connection is not good. I think the... Okay. Um, I think the connection is lost. Connection. <laughs> yes. It's okay. Hello, hello. Yes, hello. Can I have a follow-up question on my question regarding the organic uh, farming in... Organic, the, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, of uh, course. Did Indonesia have also standards regarding the organic uh, products? Like, if we fed the animals, it is... Uh, we also give concentrates. So is it a pure organic or do we consider that as organic? Because there are some standards setting that uh, it is uh, the plants that are used, the plant-based concentrates or uh, the concentrates rather are, are all uh, produced organically to consider it as organic, sir. Okay. Thank you for the question. Uh, the answer is uh, yes. Because we use uh, legumes, uh, we use a, a plants-based uh, concentrate. So there are kinds of plants, namely indigo vera and another legume. We process it into concentrate, so we give it to the dairy goats and sheep. So we can consider all of the uh, feed is organic. Uh, they uh they have certification sir to issue from the government like uh, in other countries there are uh, there have some sir they are or they have rather sir okay unfortunately uh we don't have because we process it out for ourselves and we use it uh, for ourselves as well so um, Maybe this is a suggestion for us to uh, maybe we have to make it legal. Thank you, Julius, for your uh, ideas. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Julius. Uh, okay. I see on the chat box. Uh, from Eli, is it? Eli, yeah. Yes. Uh, he suggested that to also include biomass technology for energy and fuel from goat manure. Oh, yeah. Uh -uh. Yes. Yes, this is a great idea. So we have maybe make a biogas installation. Uh, maybe I should talk to my... Uh, Yes, my superior, my my boss maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, uh, the agricultural technology park is operated by the government of Bogor Regency, so everything in it it has to be uh, it has to be uh, put it into the budget, the annual budget. So I will consider this. Uh, biomass technology uh, for the upcoming plan. Thank you, Eli, for your suggestion. It's amazing. 
Okay, thank you so much. Uh, is there anyone who want to give comments or uh, ideas or um, questions to Mr. Abdi? Um, because Agriculture Technology Park Cigombong is in a in an early stage, and that's why uh, you can we we still have many chances to give ideas to uh, the development of agriculture technology part uh, because it is still in the in the early stages uh, that's why uh, there will be more um, buildings more infrastructure in in the next uh, and and current year yes okay I saw that Eli may be using Google Translate for welcome, maybe. <laughs> so <laughs> she said, Selamat datang. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Eli. Uh, mabuhai. <laughs> mabuhai. <laughs> Because Eli is from Philippines. Yes. Okay. Um, is there anyone from Ecotourism Study Program who wanted to make comment? Um, oh, we have here Miss Kania. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my connection is not good. Okay, uh, no, I, I don't have the question for Mr. Afdi, but yes, I'm the lecturer of Ecotourism Study Program, and I have the student who can uh, uh, can design the Ecotourism Program. Maybe Technology Park need uh, yeah. yes needs uh, the needs uh, the my student to help design the ecotourism program because uh, i think uh, the technology uh, the technology park uh, has uh, the potential for the ecotourism program and so uh, if you need uh, to help Uh, to uh, design the ecotourism program, I will uh, ask my student to for internship. Yes, yes. yes. For course. the next semester. Uh, uh, next semester for the, I think the uh, PKL or in English. Uh, for no, internship. Yes. Internship. Internship. Well, okay. Yes. Uh, so maybe I hope we will. Uh, Like uh, no, no. Like a cooperation, collaboration, like cooperation, and we will give the memorandum of uh, understanding MOU. MO, yeah. MO, yeah. Uh, yes, MOU for for uh, ecotourism study program and technology uh, park Cigomong Technology Park. So it's uh, I'm I'm very happy uh, when I. When I go to Tech uh, Cigomong Technology Park because I think you have a good potential to ecotourism uh, program uh, in uh, Cigomong. So if you want, uh, if you need to, to someone to help uh, design the ecotourism program, you can call me and I will ask my student to go to <laughs> uh, Cigomong Technology Park. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Mrs. Mrs. Kania, for your suggestion. This is a, the best idea uh, because actually we have no uh, idea how the ecotourism should be work, should be done. So this is a very good collaboration between IPB University and our office. Maybe we should it take talk it later. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's amazing. From this two-hour session, we we'll, we will have an output of um, MOA. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you so much, Miss Kania. You're welcome. Uh, and also, thank you so much, Miss Darabdi. Uh, as I can see, uh, there is no other question. Um, okay. Thank you so much, our speakers, Ms. Jesseline and also Mr. Afdi uh, for your very interesting and insightful presentation. Um, well, may, before I close the presentation session, uh, I would like to hear a closing statement from Ms. Jesseline and Mr. Afdi. Uh, 
maybe Mr. Abdi can um, went first, go first with your closing statement. So uh, my closing statement is never forget the agriculture that feeds you every day. So uh, agriculture, many young generation now uh, doesn't care about the agriculture. So like our country, Indonesia, uh, is importing uh, many, many agricultural supplies from other countries. But actually we are a agricultural uh, country this is a very ironic, so never forget the agriculture. Thank you, Mr. Afdi, for your uh, closing statement. And also, uh, we wanted to hear a closing statement from Ms. Jessalyn. Do we have you here? Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. All right. So from Panen Abnormal, we would like to say that uh, we need to really appreciate the fruits uh, despite its appearances, although for now we're having abundance of supplies, but for the near future, we, we don't know yet like how the world's going to be. So we need to do the agriculture in the most sustainable way. And as well as we appreciate the producers as well. So let's consume ugly fruits and uh, make less food waste. Thank you. Okay, thank you. May that uh, message be written on our heart and also share it with others. Okay, um, thank you again, Ms. Jesslyn and Mr. Afdi for your time and your effort uh, to join us in our industry speaker session of uh, summer class from uh, College of Vocational School, IPB University uh, 2020. Uh, dear colleagues and students and also our speakers, uh, due to our limited time, I am sorry because not all of the question maybe you deliver today. If you wanted to ask more questions after this, uh, you can contact Mr. Afdi and also Jocelyn. Uh, their contact uh, number or email are written on their uh, presentation that we will share on EVETA today. Uh, I would like to say thank you for our wonderful, inspiring uh, lecturers, um, speakers, and also to all active participants who are still together with us until now. Uh, may I close this session? And don't forget that for students, don't forget that we have the last lecture tomorrow with Miss. Mrs. Ima on Smart Aquaculture Quality Monitoring System with Internet of Things tomorrow at 9 a.m. Indonesia time or 10 a.m. Philippine time. Uh, good day and stay safe. Oh yeah, can we have a picture together? Okay, uh, Mrs. Meda, if you can you help us to take the picture? Okay. Okay. From the first uh, page. Okay, everyone, yes. smile. Okay, wait. Uh, I can capture. Again. Maybe you can give us the instruction. Uh, next, next page. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Always smile. Okay. Okay. Is it done? All of the pages? Miss Meda? Yes. Done. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all the, uh, the committee, students and speakers. Uh, good day and have a nice day in front of you. You can now leave the meeting uh, and you can contact or you do you, if you have any other question, you can contact uh, Mr. Afdi and Jesslyn uh, with their contact number.
Thank you. Bye bye. Terima kasih Pak Abdi dan Mbak Jaslin. You can give us a thumbs up like Zul recorded or maybe a clap on your uh, screen. Bye bye. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jaslin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.